Hey, Jeff Cohn here with another episode of the Team Building Podcast, where we interview top team leaders, broker owners, and thought leaders from across the country and across the world. I have a very special guest today. But before we get into that, we are recording from our new podcast station in the KW Elite space in Omaha, Nebraska. Really excited to be taking advantage of this new space so that we can have in-person communication like this. We were lucky that Mr. Aaron Amuchastegui was driving through Omaha on a 60 day road trip in his RV. And Aaron, uh, Aaron and I go back a few years, he can share that story. Uh, but he let me know that they were gonna be staying at a campground outside of Omaha. And I said, hey, just stay at my house. And he's like, well, where am I gonna put my RV? I said, you can put it in my outbuilding. So I actually built a building for an RV, never bought one. And I finally got to see what an RV looked like in the outbuilding. And it fits. It fit. It, it it fits so good. The, <laughs> it did. What a what a fun intro. What a what an awesome new podcast studio you have here. The KW Elite building that you guys have built here. I've been seeing you on social media as you've been getting ready to launch this place, and it's super cool. Like yeah. the tour that I got this morning of what you're doing to try to like enhance and teach people out there. So very cool. And yes, me and my family are so grateful to be staying in your outbuilding. It's really been a, a <laughs> it's the nicest resort we've stayed at yet. So right. we get the. We get to, to hang out at the house. The kids get to go play in the pool. I'll then, poke some fun at Aaron. Aaron didn't tell me he was also coming with two dogs. So yeah. I look out in my backyard and I think I see my dog and he looks like he's lost like 20 pounds. Aaron has the exact same medium golden doodle that I has, have and his likes to swim. So the first time I saw his dog, he had just come out of my swimming pool. And Aaron's like, hey, I hope it's okay we brought our dogs. Yeah, that was, I was super relieved when you said you also had a golden doodle. Because our golden doodle is, she jumps on people, she's hyper, and then you're like, no, I have the same one. So yeah. thank goodness you had a dog, and thank goodness they got along plenty fun. Absolutely. Well, we keep these episodes to about 20 minutes. Um, let's start off by sharing with our audience why they should listen to the interview with you and what you've done up to this point. And I think it'd be cool to interlace the story of Clint Bartlett, my business partner with Dynamic Properties and I coming out and visiting your ranch up in Sacramento, California. Yeah, man. So the, can we take a 20 minute story and make it three or four <laughs> yes. to get everybody <laughs> excited, but those are the best podcasts. So yes, we promise you this is going to be fast and dirty as we You're going to get up, it. It's, good, it's going to be a fun one. Some fun stuff today. Yeah. So when you did the big announcement, you said you interview like agents and brokers and thought leaders. And I'm like, which one am I in that? <laughs> like, like what, what gets me here? So the, I have mostly been an investor. I have, uh, you know, back in 2005, I graduated from school in construction management, went mm -hmm. right into home building. It was the best time ever to graduate in home building. You know, home building companies were building houses like crazy. I had won a few national championships in college and like right out of school, I had this really bad expectation of life because I was getting paid six figures a year to like build these businesses. We were golfing every week during the workday. As soon as we built it, they would sell. And then housing market crashed a couple years later. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden that was our rude awakening. And we went from having just tons of houses and 150 employees to laying off people across three different states. And there was like five of us left. And so the, and it was like the owners, the guys that owned the company and me, I was the only non-family member that was left. Wow. With After that. the dust settled back in what? 2008? 2008, yeah, 2008, 2008, 2009. And near the end of 2009, we were scrambling, trying to find different business plans at that we were trying to buy reos from people and it was a, at that time if you didn't know the guy with the listing you just weren't going to win mm -hmm. they already had their buddies it was a hot market they would they would get the listing the same agents would get all the all the foreclosure listings they would sell it to their buddies they would fix it and flip it and it was just a crazy time we made hundreds of offers we'd offer make offers like two minutes after they'd come on on the market cash Amazing. offers over asking they'd be like sorry we already accepted one you're yeah. like that's bull right we figured out that we could buy them a little further upstream. We started buying foreclosures on the courthouse steps. I mean, I'm skipping a bunch of steps here with that, but nobody was teaching people how to do it back then. If someone doesn't pay their mortgage, they then get notices from their lender and then it goes to an auction on the courthouse steps. So before it becomes an REO, investors have a, have a chance to bid against each right. other on the courthouse steps. It's a very high risk, high reward type scenario. Yep. We started buying houses and, that way. And you wrote a book about this. Yes. So the, talk about that really quick. The, so we just launched our book published by Bigger Pockets. It's called Bidding to Buy. So David Osborne and I wrote this. It's it's, it's a step-by-step -step guide to buy foreclosures on the courthouse steps. Okay. I have a lot of stories in there about the, so it's a very high risk business. It's very scary for people. We have the five steps in there to take it from a high risk to a very low risk. It's also a very fun business and it can be super profitable. 
we flipped a thousand houses from 2009 to 2012. Say, buying, say that number again. How many yeah. homes did you flip? A thousand. Is this a puff number or is this the, real? No, it's a real number. Now, but if you're just getting started, I don't want the puff number. That's just telling you like why I have good advice. When I started, I hadn't done any. Right. right. When I bought right. my, when I bought my first That's house, I hadn't sentence. had any. When I started, I hadn't done any. Yes. That should be how most people start. Right. That is how I most people start. Any. But don't. When people tell you how awesome they are, you have to remember they weren't always awesome. Right. My first investor was my dad. Right. Like he was like, hey, I'll loan you. He was a home builder at the time. That was no longer a business. Yep. He had two hundred twenty-five thousand dollars. He sent me two hundred twenty-five thousand dollars in checks. So is, bought, this, is this roadmap inside the book? The, some of the roadmaps in the book, yeah. Okay, so if somebody wants to start out, they've never done anything, and they want to go buy a, um, a door at the courthouse steps, will the book show them yes. how to do that? Yes, you want to go buy your first house. With, uh, you can, with foreclosure leads, you can buy direct from an owner before, yep. or you can buy in the courthouse steps. We yep. talk about all the ways to do yep. that. And it truly is all of my secrets, because when we started, it was really hard. Yep. It was a good boys club, and they tried to kick us out of it. They didn't want us yep. to be a part of it. I've been told you have to analyze about 100 deals to find one. And that those good old boys clubs, once you have identified the one you want to buy, they've strategically placed bidders and they have to take turns buying the bad one to push people from even being a part of the club. Yeah, have it you is seen one. that kind of stuff? I have seen that stuff. When we first started, I mean, we were very lucky on our very first house. And the after that, it took a long time before we were successful again because we started to see some of that. Yep. And the only reason we were able to buy the first house is the other people there thought we had bought a bad yep. deal. And you bought these to flip and now I know you hold... What's your hold portfolio look like right now? So now we have 350 houses. We, yeah, well, if we buy, let's say 10 houses a month, we'll keep eight of them as rentals. Wow. And two of them as flips. Some of that'll be equity for those. Some of those are with investment partners. Some of those are just my wife and I yep. own them. When you say and flip, are you actually closing? Or are you wholesaling, wholesaling? What's your strategy with that? So we actually buy, well, because we buy most of our stuff at auction, we have to close on it. Yes. So we buy it, you bring cashier's checks. That can be from an investor or yourself. You buy cashier's checks. You can't get a regular loan on it until the deed arrives a few weeks later. Okay. So we'll buy them during those three weeks, but you don't want to lose that time either. So we fix it and then we'll put it on the market. Sometimes we'll, a lot of times, right? I mean, market's hot right now. Everybody's, it's unfairly hot right now. It's making bad flippers look good. Anybody yep. that bought a house six months ago is looking like a genius right now yep. because the houses are worth more than they were. Yep. So yeah, you can, you can do all sorts of ways to get those houses as we got, what I learned, I flipped it. So when I say I flipped a thousand houses from 2009, to 2012, in 2013, I got put out of business and I lost all my money. I'd started the year with like a million bucks cash and I thought I was king and these new guys were coming in, you know, Blackstone was coming mm -hmm. in to start doing single family rentals and, and they said, come join us, we're gonna put you out of business. I did not think they could put me out of business. I was super cocky and my lesson learned was boom, they took it away in a day. And so then as I, so then I spent a year trying to figure out what am I gonna do next? They are now beating me on the courthouse steps. I don't have a business anymore. My problem at the time was my business was just my daily income. Mm -hmm. I was flipping houses and I was flipping so many. I'm like, worst case, I'll flip a house or two a month. No big deal. And I'll still make plenty of money. I didn't think I could make zero. What I learned then is I should have had a backup plan. What I learned then is I should have been, I said, what if I would have just kept like 10 of those flips, 10 of those thousand as right. rentals. I learned I should have started inventing in rentals. So that's why now when I buy, I keep more as rentals yep. and, and do a couple flips. And it totally paid off. So back in April, the world went crazy. Yep. A bunch of my businesses did get shut down. I'm not, I wasn't, I haven't been able to buy any flips since then. Mm -hmm. I, you know, my Airbnbs were slowed down a bunch of things, but my rentals weren't people paid rent. Right. And so if I hadn't been buying rentals over the past few years, I would have had a really rough last six months. Yep. But those, the reason I bought those rentals, I said, Hey, for a, for a rainy day, they'll ca carry through. So the, that's, yep. that's, and you know, Clint and I love that strategy as well. We keep one for every three we acquire. Uh, we usually close on one and flip it, close on one and hold it, and don't close on one and or close and sell it as retail, like a wholesale yeah. or wholesale it to somebody else. And, and I, I love the story about you and Clint as you bring up your business. So the several years ago, you know, we were we were in, in GoBundance together, you know, mastermind, and it was my first experience at a mastermind. And if you're listening and you're thinking about doing something, go join a mastermind, get a club, get a coach, get other people that are doing this, even if they're on the other side of the world. Yep. And Jeff and Clint reached out to me and they said, Hey, we're going to start a flipping company or we flipped a couple houses. Yep. We wanted to come. We heard that you were doing a lot. This is five years ago. Almost. I think. Yeah. Probably back like 2016. Five, you guys flew out to my house in California yep. out on the ranch from Omaha, from Omaha. I was Aaron's showing, like, let's do a phone call. We're like, no, we want to like hang out at your farm. Yeah. And the, and we had never met before. 
And it was like, come on in, let's come on in, let's hang out. I showed you my beehives, I showed you, you know, the, the ranch, my chickens, and the, but we also dug into how to build a flipping company, how to scale that. You guys put forth major effort to try to learn. Yep. When you were there, you were super paying attention. You were going to learn whatever I was willing to give you. And because you were willing to fly out, I was totally willing to say like, here, what, what's mine right. is yours. Let's do this. And you guys spent a couple days learning. You went back and you dug in deep. You guys start flipping just a ton of houses. Mm -hmm. Now you guys have done, you and Clint have built up a bunch inside that business. Yep. And I love that story for the idea that the, I think sometimes people forget about the amount of effort it took to get started yep. on people. Or they hear what we're doing and remembering you guys put forth so much effort to try to get better at that. Sure. Well, and I always tell people the difference between you and me are the people you meet, the podcasts you listen to, and the people you mastermind with. And I think a lot of people that want to grow don't spend enough time reading, educating themselves, and then taking action. Or you'll have a camp of people that educate. And the action part, I think, is so key. And we talked about that before we started recording today about being willing to fail forward. It's okay if on your first deal you lose $5,000. That actually, in my opinion, would be a big win. And a lot of people say they want to be an investor, but they just don't know how to get started. And I think your book would help them answer that question. You also have a podcast. Yeah. You want to speak to that? Yeah. So the, I've been lucky enough to be the host of the Real Estate Rockstars podcast for the last year. And the, and when we took over the podcast, it was almost entirely focused at real estate agents and how to do transactions as real estate agents. And that is still 90% of the focus but one of the things we're trying to teach agents and teach listeners really is diversify a little bit. That lesson I learned when I was just a flipper, I wish I would had something else. I don't want anyone to be just a real estate agent. I don't think real estate agents should be, I think they should master that craft. I think they should make a bunch of money as a real estate agent, but I think they also need to take some of that money and become an investor and buy a house or start these ancillary businesses or start a construction company yep. or something else. I, I, I think now we're trying to transition to say, hey, get really great at this. But don't forget about you know, creating a backup. You need something to generate the revenue. You need a backup. So a lot of people that don't want to have to fund deals and don't have a father that's going to write them a $250,000 check, Clint and I strategically flipped to generate enough revenue to buy and hold. And one of our biggest mistakes in our first two years was we were keeping every other house. And then we recognized how much income we were generating, how much tax obligation we had to that income. And we decided that the strategy, if you weren't bringing in hard money, was to buy a uh, hold one and then flip the other two or sell off the other two in some way. Uh, we don't have a lot more time. Uh, just kind of wrapping up, I do want to invite all of our listeners to come and attend our investment workshop. Uh, Clint is actually the one who presents. We'd love to get Aaron out sometime to attend this as well. But it's in September. We're doing it in person. We do not have a virtual option. You can find out more information about that at Elite Real Estate Systems. Dot com. Um, it's September 21st on a Monday. It's an all day event. And then day two, which is the 22nd of September is our team building workshop. We have about 50 people that will be here. Um, we are going to practice social distancing. We're going to wear masks and we're going to follow all of the regulations in Omaha to keep people safe, but it should be an amazing event. So if you want to learn how to scale your business, you want to start investing in real estate. This is going to be the download that everyone needs to take their business to the next level. Final thoughts. What's one thing that you've learned as far as like a pattern in your life that's helped you to be successful that you could leave for our audience members today. Yeah, the, I mean, one thing is hard, but we were talking about a little beforehand, taking action is always going to be the right step. There, there are a lot of people that listen to a lot of podcasts and they say, someday I'm gonna buy a house and someday I'm gonna do that. And years and years go by and they haven't bought a house yet or years and years go by and they haven't got their license yet or whatever it is. Right. Take action. Like Jeff said, if you buy your first house and you lose 5,000 bucks, that's a win because you took action. You learned so much for that 5,000. People pay $100,000, $200,000 to go to college and get a master's degree. And then they become a bartender, right? Like there is, people invest a lot of money in those things. When you are getting started in real estate, even if you're losing money, just think of that as an investment in yourself. Take action toward your goal today. If it's a someday, life is short, make that someday now. If you're gonna lose money on your first deal, you're probably always gonna lose money on your first deal. That's totally okay, because you gotta get that one done so you can make money on your second deal. Yep. So take action toward that goal and know that even if it feels like it didn't go right, I'm sure you learned enough that you're not gonna make that same mistake again. I love it, that's great advice. Thank you, Aaron, so much. Great to have you in Omaha and here in our podcast station. First podcast from here, I think this went really well and I really appreciate your authenticity and your willingness to share with our audience today. Yeah, thanks for letting me be the first guest in your new podcast studio. This, this is, is awesome, Aaron. we're gonna have a lot more in the future. Thank you. All right.